All right. Um, there's some things you need to know if you're going to try to have baby pigs at home, if you're going to have a sow, if you've never had any. One thing you're going to have to do is as close to as soon after being born as you can. You need to take the baby pigs. It's going to sound mean. It's going to sound cruel, and but it's something you have to do. You have to take the baby pigs. Stick your. I can't show you because it's kind of a. You got to get them away from the sow. You have to put them in a basket, distract her somehow, and get them as far away from her as you can get them. Carry them to the house and get her to carport or something. Because when they squeal, she's going to get dangerous. But you need to stick your thumb in the corner of their mouth, hold their mouth open, stick your thumb through the back of their corner of their mouth, and they've got four teeth at the top and bottom. On, there's two on the bottom, two at the top. You take a pair of pliers like these. Kind of buy you a pair and, and designate them as your pig pliers. Don't get a pair out in the shop or out in the toolbox on the tractor. But have a clean pair that you don't use for anything else. Stainless steel ones would be real good, but these aren't stainless steel, but we've kept them clean. But take these and use some imagination here. This is the pig's mouth. You're going to need to stick your thumb in the back and hold his mouth open. His mouth will be here like this. You need to snip these four teeth out, top and bottom. <coughs> if you have any plans on selling the pig at an auction, <laughs> You're going to have to cut his tail off. Same pair of pliers, about that far from his body. Snip it off fast. Do it fast. The faster you do it, the less it's going to hurt him. If you're going to castrate your pigs, around here the old people did it when they weighed about 35 pounds with a razor blade and you rounded up as much help as you could get and it was usually somebody that was good at it and they do it between about 20 and 35 pounds up to 50, 60 pounds but the bigger the pig the harder it is to hold and I, I don't suggest that you can do it but I don't suggest it the way they do it on a commercial hog farm is with the same pair of pliers when he's two days old. You flip the little pig over, his butt's right here, you take his thumb, press, the, press his testicles up, snip, snip, two slices in the skin, push them out of the hole, pull them out, cut them off. Like I would do a video on how to do that, but we're not planning on cutting any of these boar pigs. I'm going to try to sell them as intact boar breeding stuff. I'm not cutting the tails off these pigs because we're going to try to sell them for breeding stock. They're full blooded breeding stock and that's what I'm going to try to sell them for. But if you're you need to cut the milk teeth out if you don't and some sows it won't bother but some it will they bite the nipples when they're nursing. They'll get sore. So I won't let them eat. And they'll starve to death. I mean, you've got to do it. I know it's going to sound cruel. And it's going to hurt your feelings when you do it. But you've got to do it. Docking their tails. If you do not dock their tail, you cannot sell them at an auction. If you're planning on possibly having to sell part of them at the auction, they will not take them with a tail. The tail has to be docked. Uh, castrating them. If you don't castrate them... I don't think they'll take them at the feeder pig sale, and if they do, they're not going to bring anything. Uh, something else I want to warn you about, Piggy here, me and Piggy are friends. Uh, Piggy likes me and I like Piggy, but Piggy tried her absolute best to kill me the other night. Uh, she laid in that fair and style room, had her butt pushed up against boards where she couldn't have the pigs and I had to move right I have a choice I had to get her to move and she tried her when I finally got her up she tried her best to kill me and it was three o'clock in the morning it was in the dark with a flashlight it just it was a bad deal so, so watch yourself 
your old sow that's always been easy to handle and you and her are just the best of friends but she's having pigs or after she has pigs she don't like you anymore you're just a monster just making her pigs squeal and when those pigs go to squealing there's nothing that'll stop them. if you can get far enough away you're fine but don't don't put those pigs in a basket and bring them right here and say, well, I'm going to trim this litter of pigs right here and that fence is going to stop her because it will not do it. If she gets motivated enough and a mama's a mama, you know, if she gets motivated enough, she's coming through it. She'll come through the side of that shelter. Don't trust your pen to hold her and she will hurt you. I've seen people get hurt many times. Something else I'll tell you, if you watched the first video, the stall mats did not work at all. Don't try, it was a mistake. They worked until she decided she was going to build a nest. They were gone. She wadded them up in a ball. They weigh 150 pounds a piece. They're awkward. Me and Trevor got and never got them in there. She pulled them out, tore them up. I mean... We had to get right before she had to pee. She couldn't lay down. We had to go in there and take them out, pull them out in the dark. Uh, sign she's fixing to have. Uh, we talked about this in the last video, but in case you didn't watch it, the biggest one that's going to be your dead giveaway is she's going to dig a hole. She's going to do everything within her power to dig a hole. And uh, that's going to happen right right before she has them. She may be a little listless, lay around a little bit the day before. You'll see some milk show up. The closer she, they, her, she may actually start dripping some milk right before she has them, but most time it's digging the hole, it's gonna tell the tale. She's already laid on one pig. We had 11, she's already laid on one. They will lay on them. What we've done in here with the boards around the sides helps. And that's something I'm going to touch on right quick. I got to watching YouTube the other night. And uh, same thing y'all do. I was going around looking at ideas. I said, well, let me watch some of other people's videos, and I'm going to see how they did things. Well, somehow or another, I ended up watching a video on the new firing crates they're using in Australia that are different. They're not like the American ones that are a piece of stainless, there's stainless steel pipe and it's, it's you got a sow size hole in the middle and each side's open for the pigs. All she can do is stand up and lay down. She can't turn around or anything. And I went to reading the comments. I started commenting on some people's videos um, because I want people to comment on mine, you know, and I guess that's what you do. If there's anything I can say constructive, most time I won't put anything negative in one. You got to be a real dummy for me to put anything negative in your comments. But uh, there was people down there talking about firing crates, how cruel they were, and just inhumane and the worst thing ever, and they should be outlawed. And but the truth of the matter is, if you had a commercial hog farm, if you didn't use a firing crate, you'd go out of business. And there was one genius down there that said, uh, it's a myth that sows will lay on pigs. Well, I wish he'd have been here today because I show us the world made him dig that hole to bury the one that she laid on last night. Because they do do it. The last litter we had, she laid on all of them. But three. But three. Then one failed swoop. We had 11 or 12 pigs. She laid down the nursery and we had three pigs. You heard one go, and that was it. You, you couldn't get over. I was actually here when I happened. You could not get over here quick enough to get her up. They were done. Uh, in this video, you can see why. That sow is as big as a bear. Those pigs are as big as half-grown kittens. Some of them ain't big as half-grown kittens. It's just fell stand a chance. And she's a good mama. She tries to shoo them all to one side. But they're smaller, I mean, they're small and they're fast. And, and she'll get them out from behind her and go to lay down, they'll run back around her. That's the purpose of that farrowing crate, is to keep her from is to keep the pigs from being able to run under her. Or she, and they'll lay on them in the farrowing crate sometimes, too. But I just wanted to tell y'all that. I know that was way off subject, but uh, I, I, I see some stupid, stupid, stupid mess. People don't know anything about agriculture. 
the vast majority of the world has no idea where their food comes from. None. And they come up with the most ignorant stuff you've ever heard in your life. Farmers are trying to poison you. Farmers are doing this. Farmers are doing that. Raising livestock's cruel. I don't know if I ever mentioned this or not, and I deleted them. I, I found out you could delete comments on your videos, but the first pig video I ever put up, the first comments that I ever got on one of my videos was death threats because I told the truth. I said that sometimes when you raise something, it's hard to kill it. And that's true. It's hard to walk out here to an animal that you've raised and babied and looked after and it runs up to the fence happy to see you. It's awful hard to shoot it in the face and throw it in a pot full of scalding water and scrape the hair off it. You got to suck it up and do it if you want to eat. But it's the truth. It can be, if you can't do it, don't start it. You know, that's what I was trying to tell people. And, and some of these other channels sell these homestead fairy tales about how things are, the things ain't, I'm going to tell you the truth if I can. But I got way off subject there. Uh, what we were trying to cover was you've got to cut the milk teeth out of the pigs. And I apologize for that little rant. And uh, But we're live and unedited basically, so it's probably going to end up in the video. But uh, you got to cut the milk teeth out. you got to. If you're going to sell them at the sale, you got to doctor tail. If you're going to eat him or sell him at an auction, you're going to have to castrate him. We'll do a video on castrating some pigs, and I'll do a video on trimming some pigs. But these, the only thing we did then was broke the teeth out. Their breeding stock, as a general rule, breeding stock keeps the tail. Uh, it's, just, it's just the way it is. Uh, if you notice my guild over here, she was docked and notched. She's yeah, laying like, down. Like older video, we had to walk in there and get her and everything. Anyway, she's had her tail docked. She's had her ears notched. And something else I need to hit on right quick. I bet a lot of people don't know this. And I don't know about every state, but in North Carolina, for a pig to travel on the highway, for you to put that pig in a trailer and take him down the highway, he has to have a tag in his ear from your farm with your farm number on it. You got to go to state. They got to give you a little card to put in your pocket that says you got some hogs. That you're a hog farm number such and such. Don't matter if you got two pigs. Um, but they're gonna give you a little card and they're gonna they give them to you. They're free. The guy will come out here one day on one of them little white state trucks that we love so good, and he'll pull up and he'll walk out here and he'll kind of inspect your facilities, and uh, he'll give you a tagger, and he'll give you some tags. But the catch is. The catch is, if you don't put that tag in that pig's ear, and the game warden enforces it. We all know how game wardens are. State trooper might let you off every once in a while, but game warden don't. They catch you on that pavement, away from your farm with that pig on the trailer, they're going to write you a $5,000 per pig fine. And they're going to say that you were transporting feral pigs. And I've said in some other videos, there's some stupid laws, there's some stupid zoning restrictions, uh, stupid agricultural restrictions. Check on them, because because not that pig thing. It, you can ask the sheriff's deputy about it, he don't know. But then I've got a friend of mine that decided to take two pigs to the slaughterhouse, got stopped halfway up, there was a $10,000 fine, and as of today, he ain't got out of it. He's going to have to pay it. And he does not have $10,000, and common sense does not enter into it. You can't say, well, I raised these pigs. I'll take you to the house and show you where I raised them. Common sense don't enter into it. Uh, to me, a game warden that couldn't tell the difference between a feral pig and a, and a tame pig probably don't need to be a game warden. But that doesn't enter into it. But that's the kind of stuff that will get you in trouble. And, um... Like I said, we're rehashing big things because I cover stuff in other videos that people probably haven't watched. I know we get new people watching this and they don't go back and look at those. But uh, remember that sow's going to be ill. She's going to be hard to deal with and she'll hurt you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't fight her off. I'm a big guy. I weigh 300 pounds, but I can't fight that sow off. I can't do it. 
Uh, you got to cut the milk teeth. We'll do the video on trimming pigs when we have a litter we're going to trim. Our next litters that we have are going to be just straight mixed up meat type hogs and they're going to have to be cut. I may even dock their tails. Uh, we tend to leave the tails on them just to kind of show that they're not hog house hogs. Um, hog economics. Let's, uh, let's go out with hog economics here. Here's the sad truth about that. And, uh, <clears throat> we've been making our own feed. And I buy some feed still when I don't have any corn ground or we find out we're out of feed. My little boy will tell me that we're out of feed right at dark. And I'll just send my wife to the mill to get a bag or two but, to get by. But uh, the truth of the matter is, if you're trying to raise pigs, it's going to take eight out of that litter. If I get the price I want for them now, you got to understand that. If I don't kind of get stuck with them and kind of half give them to somebody to get rid of them where I ain't got to feed them. If I get the price I want for them, it's going to take eight of those pigs just to pay for feeding the sow and the boar for long enough for her to have them. And then there's going to be two pigs. If I sell them, it'll be profit. Which if you figured my time in, it must say $2 an hour. I ain't made nothing. That's another little pet peeve I got. I see these this stuff on YouTube people talk about. I made $10,000 off of pigs on my homestead. Sir, you are a liar. I want you to tell me how you did it. I've watched your videos several times. You ain't done that. The only way you done it is you ain't figured everything in. And you still ain't figuring no labor. But, but my wife keeps track of what we do money-wise. And there's no profit in it. And the moral of that story is, when you go to the to somebody's place to buy a couple of feeder pigs, and they tell you they want two dollars a pound for them, man ain't making no money at two dollars a pound. He ain't making no money. Uh, now there may be some alternative ways of feeding them, feeding them scraps, slops. Uh, hogging down cornfields and stuff that, that may help a little bit, but it's not going to help that much. If you figure in everything, facilities, fuel, equipment, if you really keep track of all of it, you, you ain't making nothing. The only way you make money with pigs is numbers. If you got two sows in the backyard, you ain't going to, you're not going to make much profit. Even us with seven full-blooded breeding stock and getting a kind of a ambitious price for it and seven pigs for the 4-H and FFA shows, we don't make profit. Not really. The best we've been able to do so far is get our pork for free. You can take what you sold the other pigs for and if you feed out four and sell two, you could kind of get your two pigs for free. That's the best we've ever been able to do was pay the feed bill where we break even and then have two pigs left over and we paid the butcher. That's about as good as we've been able to do. And then you'll ask yourself, say, well, Chris, why do you raise pigs? And the short answer is I'm probably crazy. That's what my wife tells me anyway is that I'm at least mildly insane. But the truth is the reason I do it it's cause nobody else does. Raising hogs is a tradition. It's been a tradition around here for 100, 200, only 250 years probably. Just my family. And at some point, the older men that were raising pigs that I was buying pigs from quit. Their health got bad, just the reality, there was no money in it, finally caught up with them and they quit. And what has happened with that, this is something else I need to cover right quick. I'm not trying to make this video hour long. But uh, what's happened with that is the quality of the pigs that you get off the ground now has gone down considerably. The truth of the matter is 9 out of 10 hog operations that you find that are raising a few on the ground, we might not say 9 out of 10, we might say 6 out of 10. 
The truth is the pigs got stole out of hog house at some point in time. I ain't saying they stole them, but somebody stole them out of a hog house. They're commercial breed hogs that are built to be, that are kind of engineered, I guess, to be raised on concrete, on a feeder, medicated, and grow as fast as humanly possible to about 220 pounds. They go from zero to 220 as fast as a race car and kind of style out because that's as big as they're going to get them. You put them out here on the ground, they don't do so hot. That, that, that commercial hog blood does not do so hot. And I'm lucky enough that I had a neighbor down the road, a friend of mine, that had the old timey hogs. They had been raising hogs since time immortal. And it never got completely out. And he still has some of the old Duroc bloodlines and some of the old Hampshire bloodlines, pigs that were grow. And I've showed you before the difference between some hogs with a little hog house blood in them and uh, my old timey hogs. But they do good on dirt. Now these two red pigs over here, if you put them in a hog house, I'm sure they'd be knocking the, they'd be knocking records out. But out here on the ground, feeding them with a feed scoop, not a, a feeder, and not feeding them feed that's directly engineered for that hog at every little stage of growth. And they check a few of them and up the protein and up this and up. They just don't. They don't do as good. Ah, uh, that's just the. Uh, ask me being as honest as I could possibly be. But I'd love to see some more people get into raising pigs. Actually raising pigs. It's dying out. Nobody does it. I think I've covered the reasons why nobody does it. And it's kind of sad. The old heritage breeds are dying out. The, the only ones that are get, gaining in popularity again is the stuff people didn't want 50 years ago. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. Stuff like the mule-footed hogs and, and red wattles and herfords and uh, some of the other ones went out of popularity for a reason. They just, they didn't, they weren't as good as, as like the Hampshire's and Durocks and Yorkshire's and Spotted Poland China's and you know, a few of the Tamsworth was a good land races were, got popular in the 60s. But uh, I grew up with a commercial hog farming in a small fair to finish operation. Prior to that, my daddy was a commercial hog farmer on the ground. Over here, our care pasture, all the way up this hill was, was sows. They raised them on the ground. Uh, they used to, uh, excuse the gunfire, we've got some nut down the road and around the corner here with a, sounds like a Tommy gun. But used to have shelters, we'd have sows just, they did miss something a little bit and they go to having pigs in a snowstorm, we're going to put shelters up over top of them. I remember the, I remember the raising hogs on the ground commercial. But it changed, it went to confinement livestock and that's trying to go back to raise them on the ground. But if you just remember that for me, if you go to buy a pig for somebody and you think he's asking an outrageous price, just remember what he's got in. Remember on top of all the money that he's probably got all night sitting out there with the sow to have the pigs. If he might have had to breed the sow two or three times to ever get her to cash. That's what happened to us here. And it can be a little difficult. It ain't easy. But I would like to see more people get into raising them, actually raising them, where there'd be some available. And I believe that's about all I got I can tell you. It'll help you any at all. But just remember, you'll never pry a field but turn it over in your mind. And if you want to do this stuff, you can do it. I mean, it ain't, uh, it ain't that hard. We're still learning. I've been doing this since I was a little boy, and I'm still learning. I'm still improving on what my daddy did. I'm, I'm still improving on what my granddaddy did. I'm, I'm still trying the next big thing that don't really work. I'm still doing what state college and extension office tell me. It don't really work. And going back to the way I was doing it. Um, you know, it is what it is. But we'll talk about hog feed on another video. We got to have a talk about hog feed. We got to have a talk about corn and soybeans.
um we'll save that for another time happy new year thank you for watching have a good one